Plays, plays, plays. We love looking at plays, and we're going to look at five today. Let's go. Greetings and welcome back to Five Play Friday, where we look at plays. We analyze all of the things so we can get better as basketball officials. With that, let's look at our play number one. Of course, play number one is a you make the call. Put your ruling down in the show notes, or in the comments rather, and uh, we'll discuss the play later. So stick around to the end of the video. All right, a ball thrown from behind the three-point arc, deflected by a defender, goes in the goal. How many points are we going to score here? National Federation of High School Basketball Rules. Two points or three points? Put your ruling down in the comments below. And we'll review the play at, at later in the video, so stick around to the end for that. With that, let's move on to play number two. All right, a block charge play, defensive player leans, sits down early, a charge is ruled. Just want to take a look at this play submitted by Jay Severson um, and just sort of talk about all of the things and break it down about why this would not be a charge by rule. So we look at the play as it develops. Does our player have legal guarding position? Without question two feet on the floor facing their opponent, right? We notice their position is vertical, right? A little less than, you know, straight, you know, not straight up and down, but this is vertical um, by any context you want to look at it. But then the player sits down, right? We note their body position is like this. Anytime a player's body position is like this, that's, that's a, a, a clue for us on a play like this. In order to have a charge, we have to have displacement with torso contact, right? In this instance, the player uh, drops their body in such a fashion that their torso never comes into play. But what does come into play? The knee, right? The extended leg. There's, uh, there's contact by the defensive player on that. If that contact caused our defensive player to, fa to fall, that would definitely be a block in this instance. Right? So the, the player, the white player, right, ends up like on the floor. But what caused them to go to the floor? It was not the offensive player. What caused them to go to the floor was them, their own act of sitting down. So we don't have a charge in this instance. I think we end up uh, with an upward gaze by the lead official, right? So, but when we look at these plays, block charge plays where the defender goes early, right? Does that mean we cannot have a charge, right? If they if they start uh, if their body um, starts to fall back a couple of degrees and then, then, there's, then there's torso contact that displaces the defender, then we still have a charge, right? The simple act of, 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 of leaning the torso, softening their body, potentially um, flexing their knees slightly does not end legal guarding position. But in this instance, our player does not get displaced by torso contact, 
right? So a no call would certainly be on the table here. And again, if that extended knee caused the defender to fall to the floor, I would have a block on this play every single time on that. So just an example of a block charge play and, you know, actions that we see by defenders, right? They, they can't move forward. So all they can do is firm up their body or, 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 or soften their position, right? They're anticipating contact. This, our defensive, our offensive player here is much bigger than the defender, right? <laughs> you can see reluctance to like try to like, no, I'm going to stand in there and what have you. So the actions of the defender don't necessarily give up their legal guarding position here, but this is not a charge by rule. I would have a no call on this play. Yeah, what do you have? What do you have? Are you going to uh, rule a block because of the actions? Are you going to issue a, is the player faking being fouled? I don't think they are. They're not faking being fouled. So we're not, we're, the technical foul is in National Federation of High School is not on the table here. They just um, sit down. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Greg Austin with A Better Official. We craft video to help basketball officials get better. One of the ways we do that is with Five Play Friday, where we break down plays and look at all the, the things. Right, pulled this one out of the vaults, probably about 12 years old, um, this game video, right? So uh, we have a steal and a, a play to the basket. New lead, an ever-worsening look. W whenever you have a tight end line, though, we we're going to race to the wall and crash into the wall. It's like <laughs> we're thinking about all of the things. But in the end, obvious foul, obvious foul. The trail comes in with uh, intentional as well on this play, right? So at the spot of the foul, we're indicating intentional. To me, that's, okay, this is intentional and we'll potentially discuss to flagrant. If we have another play where it's simply, I have a raised fist, it's a foul and we will discuss to intentional and can go out of there as well. But in this instance, obvious uh, excessive contact on this play and our crew would come together and we're going to discuss, I have definitely have intentional. What did you have from your angle, right? The trail official is definitely going to have a, a, a different look at this play than the lead, right? If we look at the lead and their ability to see all of the things on the play, let's take a look at that. Obviously the look closes, but we see the raised arm, the swipe down, the contact with the legs. We see the results on the on the affected player. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Right? It looks like they landed on their face. Are those factors in whether we determine this is intentional or flagrant? So intentional foul was the ruling, it was not upgraded to flagrant on this play, but obvious uh, uh, intentional foul. We're going to come together as a crew in this situation and talk about do we have to upgrade by flagrant? It was the, the action intended to harm. Was it violent or savage in nature? Et cetera. These would be the things as part of the conversation. But also, of course, we want to look at the habits and fundamentals, right? So the ball is stolen. In this situation, many officials make a mistake of looking at the offensive player. You have to find the defender from behind because that's the only thing on this play that's going to be of any, uh, you know, present any issues for us. Once we have ruled the foul, we have to stay at the spot. 
and make sure that white is coming into white and black is coming into black. There's no retaliatory action, right? So pretty well done on that play. Could have had more hustle as new lead to get a better look. But in the end, we know, we know what we have. As usual, we have a tremendous group of Joe supporters. Who's up on the big board? Brett Temple is, David Yanikian, Jonathan Harris, Herb Hahn, Roger George. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always head to a betterofficial.com slash coffee. Yes, yes, there's a link in the show notes below. And yes, yes, I'm going to put one up a vaults. Let's take a look at play number four, another intentional foul play. All right. A great clip sent in by Jason Hayes, right? Similar play in that we have an intentional foul, but there are many, many things to look at on this play. And let's do that. Let's look at, what's the word? All of the things. Okay, so different on this play is that our official is clearly beaten on the play and there's no way they're going to recover. So in this instance, what do we do? We find an angle. All we can do is find an angle to see the play. Clear contact negating an opponent's obvious advantage. Excessive contact knocks the player to the floor, right? Certainly intentional becomes on the table. Calling official closes down, right? Excellent. Offended player on the floor is not happy. Restrained by a teammate, official gets between them. Our, the rest of the crew is arriving late. They would have been, no, you know, if our calling official in this instance said, oh, I have a foul and turn to the table, right? Who knows what happens here behind the end line? This, and now we've got a coach on the floor yelling at the officials what they need to have on this play. That's a big part of this clip to me, Um and I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. Put your comments below. In the comments, is this acceptable action by a coach? His player was fouled hard. Is this acceptable for the coach to come on to the court and berate the officials and instruct the officials what they need to do? This call, it's just like the same thing if we came onto the court, call the foul, call the foul on a no call situation to me. So we have that, but in the end, our crew confers and they come up with intentional, really, uh, probably uh, the conference wasn't needed. It's maybe it's just optics on the play. The lead had the whole thing all the way. But what are we going to do about this coach behavior in this instance? Are, are we going to tee a coach for coming onto the floor when his fl player has been fouled and uh, pushed to the floor in this fashion? Is, is a technical foul off of the table here? So, a lot of things on this play, a lot of positives, but the coach was not dealt with. The behavior, there is a behavior presented by the coach on this play, and that is not addressed in any fashion, right? And you could say, well, we were going to discuss the play, so we didn't have time to address the coach. But to me, this is unacceptable behavior. And at minimum, minimum, direct and clear communication coach back in your box 
we got this, we're going to sort this out, right? Tempers are high, energy's high, etc. But this is not acceptable behavior and has to be addressed in my mind. So call correct, intentional foul on this play, two free throws to the offended player or their eligible substitute and the ball to orange on the end line for the resulting throw in. And so what Jason ends up doing is he puts, is, is he sort of puts a passive, the coach comes on the floor and he sort of puts a passive hand up. It's just to me, not sufficient on the play, right? So we're here and the coach is yelling. And all of his comments are directed to the official on the play. This is how you need to do your job, right? Vocally, in you know, coming at the official, etc. I don't know. To me, it's just not acceptable. <laughs> but anyway, we end up with a passive hand. We'll get it. We'll, we'll talk about it or whatever, right? Uh, to me, not sufficient on this play. And you see situations, uh, uh, you see situations as well, like a team, a, a crew did not recognize a coach's timeout request. So the coach moves further out onto the court and more animated. Timeout, 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 right? And more animated and more animated. And they end up, you know, next to the official requesting a timeout, clearly out of their box, and the timeout is granted. And then at that point, they'd say, you guys, da 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 right? And they, and they, offer some uh, opinions about the officiating skill of the crew in animated fashion directly to the officials, right? And we, we're like, well, we have screwed this play up by not recognizing the timeout request so that we're going to give more leeway. But what to what extent, you know, how far does the leeway go? Uh, the, other, the other thing is, of course, uh, the trail did not address the coach. The trail is in the obvious position to facilitate that although the lead could have been uh you know if it was todd he was not going to put up a passive hand and say we'll we'll talk about it right or something like that that's sort of the energy given right you are back in your box right now coach right now right or something like that we will talk about the play etc right also, yeah, like the, the depth onto the court that the coach comes is a factor. Oh, they're all factors, right? So if we're not going to assess a T here, are, are we going to let them get up into our face, uh, you know, get even closer and do some finger pointing in our face like this? Are we going to allow that? Or does that cross the line, et cetera? You know, uh, we're all going to have to officiate in the moment, again, a hard foul, energy rises in the building, et cetera. There's a lot of things going on in our minds, et cetera. So it's just simply, look, here's the behavior. What is the behavior? Let's break it down into really simple terms. Out onto the court, yelling, directing comments at the official in an animated fashion, instructing the official about what they need to do on this play, right? That's the behavior. Are we going to accept that in any other situation? Right Again, there's a no call. Uh, a, a, a coach thinks his player was, was fouled on a play to the basket. The officials are moving down the court, and the coach comes on the court, and he says, you have to call a foul on that. You have to call. Then it's easy, right? The ameliorating part, the, the, the tempering part here is like, well, his player got fouled hard, right? And so that sort of gives him some license, but... If we evaluate the just simply the behavior itself, in and of itself, right, clearly rises to the level of technical foul, then we're going to temper that somewhat and make our judgment about the play. Hey, that play was submitted by Jason Hayes. If you have a play to submit, there will be a link down in the show notes for you to do just that. Maybe your play will end up on Five Play Friday. All right, so... Interesting play, looking at all of the things, the behavior by the calling officials, so many great habits and fundamentals. But in the end, we have coach behavior that remains unaddressed. This has to be addressed. What would you have on this play? Are you going to tee that coach up? Or are you simply going to give them a warning? Or are you simply just going to let it go because their player was fouled and knocked to the floor? Put your comments 
down in the comments below, and I'll make sure to respond to each and every one. All right. Let's look at play number five. All right, simple block charge play, but a great play to look at just crew mechanics. Who's looking at what? What are the habits and fundamentals on the play? What can we learn from it for our own game and get better as basketball officials? All right, so a simple block charge play, three-person mechanics, right? In the end, this is uh, the secondary defender belongs to the lead. This is the lead's call. How do we end up with a double whistle on the play? These are the things we need to look at. Hmm. There's a restricted area on the floor. I don't believe that's a factor on this play. Okay, cool. So let's look at all of the things, right? So we have a double whistle, the lead takes it. What do we know about leads is they tend to go quick, right? Habitually, the play's coming at them, etc. cetera. Maybe surprised by a, a double whistle on this play. But from here, right, we've got action. And we note that our center official seems to be ball watching. That's the impression one gives, right? When the ball goes from, let's go back. Right, center on this play should be aware of this matchup here. But then when the play goes away, right, the play goes away in this instance, we've got to find something else to officiate. Oh, it's actually the trail at this point, of course. And the ball's in the center's primary. Right, we have screening action here. The lead seems to be looking across at potentially at 15 and what might come next here. Our trail official needs to pick up this screening action. This is not legal screening action. Does it rise to the level of a foul? It does not impede the progress of the player, right? But that's what we should be officiating as new center on this play. Our, uh, we have the rotation that occurs. Our trail is in perfect position in, with an open look to see feet, defender, and subsequent action here. Right? We see the body language of our center official really wants to see this play. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, so in the end, center puts a whistle on the play, but holds, right? I, everything about their body language suggests they also had charge on this play, but they hold, right? Outside officials have to hold in this situation because lead is going to go quick. If we needed to confer, we could confer a pretty obvious charge in this situation. Just a lack of discipline by the crew here. Again, I don't think this screening action rises to the level of illegal as it didn't uh, affect the defender significantly. Two feet on the floor facing opponent. There's our torso contact that causes displacement. All right, call correct. To me, that is call correct. It's go time. Got my, got my telestrator working. I, I tasked the tech team. Um, so 
when we rotate, of course, what are we looking at? Right? I don't think our I don't think our lead is officiating this action. I think our lead is anticipating what's going to come next here. What our lead is not doing, which you see many officials do, is is start ball watching here when they rotate, right? So I think our lead is just picking up what subsequent action is going to be. The ball has settled, right? It remember it came from uh, from here and then went to here. So it's clearly settled. It's clearly a key to rotate here. We'd want to remain uh, officiating the players in our primary, but we do have backside help here. Now he's picking up his defenders. Yeah, no hold from the lead. And, you know, as human beings, you can expect most leads are not going to hold here. Right? They see play, call play. <laughs> but it's a great play. And, of course, it also emphasizes the fact that we analyze our game video. There's dozens of things we can look at. Habits and fundamentals and talk about things. And that's why it's so valuable to analyze your own game video. And we strongly encourage officials to do it at each and every opportunity. It's the fastest way of an official can improve by analyzing their game video, breaking down plays either on their own or with a mentor. And it leads to rapid improvement. All right, back at the start of the episode, we had play number one, highly contested in the ruling, what do we have? A three or a two? Let's look at play number one. All right, our crew ends up wildly out of position here. What do we have? A player beyond the three-point arc throws, releases a pass to a teammate that's deflected by a defender who was within inside the three-point arc. The ball bounces high in the air and goes through the basket. How many points are scored at the high school level? NFHS basketball rules. That is our question on this play. Hope you put your comments down below. It's important to recognize that if a ball is thrown, passed, or shot from beyond the three-point arc and goes through the basket, it is a three-point goal by rule. That's very non-intuitive. This was not a try. How can a try be counted as three points, right? National Federation of High School made it very clear, very clear that any ball thrown, passed, or shot from beyond the three-point arc that goes through the basket is to be counted as a three-point goal. We have case play 5.2.1 situation C that outlines that. We have... Um, interpretations from the past, which you will not find in the rules book, that emphasize that fact as well. So, understanding that this was not a try, but that it passed through the goal at the high school level, should be ruled as a three-point goal. Confusion, confusion will reign. <laughs> Imagine. So, let's take a look at this crew, right? Our trail is, he's cooked right? Our center sort of becomes a new lead and we got two leads and everybody's uh, trying to sort out what has just occurred in our game because every, everybody might not have complete information about what, what has happened. I would expect our trail would. I believe at the collegiate level, this is considered to be a two-point goal um, and understanding that it's different at different levels, et cetera, is important as well. Yeah, we discussed we've discussed in some five play Fridays some wild scenarios. Like let's say let's say um 
a teammate is attempting a, a cross court pass there beyond the three point arc, and they throw it off a teammate's head. The teammate is 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 outside the three point arc, and the same thing occurs. Or the teammate thinks the pass is for them, and they reach up and they bat the ball, and it does the same action. If they were behind the three point arc, it is to be ruled three points. It's not a try, but it is to be ruled three points if it passes through the goal. All right, let's say we we um, scored this as a two-point goal, and then we go down to the other end. At, till what point is would they be they become a correctable error? So, like, let's say I'm the um, the lead on this play, and I emphatically say, "Hey, that's a two. That's a two to the table," and we're going back down to the other end. We're going back down to the other end, and one of my partners is like, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute." I saw this five play Friday and he said, any ball thrown beyond is a three and hold on, hold on. Right. And blows a whistle and stops play. Is it correctable? Yes. Yes, it is. As long as we do it within the correctable error time frame. Indeed. Indeed we do. We've got time for a bonus play. All right. On first viewing, it's like, I'm not sure what just happened here, right? Ball is passed from the backcourt, hits a teammate, contacts a teammate. Do they have front court status? The ball then bounces into the backcourt where it is retrieved by that same team. Is this a backcourt violation? Certainly not something you're going to see every day, but clearly, clearly? In real time, it comes, in, it comes at you quick. But our player here does not yet have front court status when the ball contacts them. Let's do this. But contacts the front court immediately thereafter. We would rely on our center official across the court there to have a, a, to have a look at that. So an unusual play, one that forces us to think if the player had front court status, when the ball hit them in the head, it would be a backcourt violation by rule. But in this very close game, it is not. All right, so that was a fun play. When I, when I first saw the clip, when, it, when it, you first play it live, it's like, I have no idea, right? Because our, first of all, our, our view is elevated. I know he's close. Was he on the line, et cetera? Was he, what if he just had a foot on the line? Next week on Five Play Friday, I'm going to break down the end of game sequence that occurred at um, a tournament in the Chicago area. Anyway, there's so much stuff packed into the final minutes of that. And one of them is an erroneous backcourt call in a, in a situation where, the, you know, you have to recognize the court you're, you're on. This one's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. The, the white lines are very subtle. And the black lines are very obvious to me, to my eye, but there are a lot of lines. And sometimes right. that's fantastic. Well, it's been a process. another another bonus play. We can't do two bonus plays, can we? Let's do one. Well, one of the great things about officiating basketball is there's moments in games that are fun and exciting. Game winner, ridiculous, heave from behind the head. Who, I ask you, who, who doesn't like a last second buzzer beater? Who, I ask you, who, I'll tell you who, this guy. He, he did not, not appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Thanks for joining us today for Five Play Friday. Appreciate if you do take a moment, hit like if you found value as a basketball official. And as usual, we have a tremendous group 
of show supporters. Who's up on the big board? Brett Temple is, David Yanikian, Jonathan Harris, Herb Hahn, Roger George. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always head to a betterofficial.com slash coffee. Yes, yes, there's a link in the show notes below. And yes, yes, I'm going to put one up above. We have for you additional video content available here. I made a choice. YouTube made a choice. You make a choice. We'll see you. See you in the next one. Take care, everybody.